Okay guys, so for our trimming video, um, I've got our piece firmed up. I used a torch. It's still steaming a little bit. Um, we'll be scooping out a little bit of the thick part of the bottom later, but the rest will be fine. Um, so I'm going to leave the bottom thick and start at the top so that as I'm working at the top, the bottom can support the top. And then we'll get our work our way down to the bottom and we'll do the bottom last. So the first thing we need to do is start thinking about these areas here. Um, now this isn't exactly the same height, but we'll kind of go with the general idea. Um, so I'm going to start to remove some material here and here. Uh, so I'm going to use some pretty small tools. I'm going to use one of these little Kemper, I think it's Kemper, um, little uh, ribbon tools and just start to remove some clay. sort of determining where this is ended up being just a hair shorter, so I'm just gonna go like this, but um, I needed to first determine kind of like where this division is here um, so that I can work this curve down in and back out to that point. So I'm gonna move that down just a little bit more to maybe about there. So now we're working with just this couple inches here at the top. It's gonna be a consistent curve that moves in and then back out. This is like the magic of throwing solid, right? You can make this thing as narrow as you want, um, as long as you fire it on a level shelf and aren't firing it to the point of being like completely glassy. Um, you can really uh, get any profile you want by throwing solid. I would just be a little careful when you're doing this, be a little careful using bigger tools. The wider the blade of the tool, or like the more tool is touching the clay at any one time, um, the more resistance you're placing on the wall. And if it hasn't been setting up for hours, you may end up with a problem there. So just be careful, don't use really big tools. There we go. So that's starting to be like like this top area, right? Like that. Now we're going to work our way in and in a, even a little bit more here and then back out. This diameter is a little too wide kind of compared to our drawing here. So we're actually just going to reduce that a little bit now. So now we've come to this point where we have, this is like our ball, right? Our little volume down here. So I've made a little cut in next to the volume and then I'm gonna make this into the volume and then do another cut down here like this so that you can see that the volume is sort of framed by these two um, con uh, conical elements. You'll be amazed at how good your trimming gets after doing a project like this. Like you'll look at a foot a completely different way because you're able to trim all this architecture into that small space all of a sudden. You can really do amazing things for your work. Sometimes um, in order to 
kind of clarify a profile, right? Like you've got all the little trimming lines and stuff and that's kind of like distracting. Um, so to get rid of that and really see what you have, sometimes I'll use a sheet metal rib. Um, I'll use a throwing sheet metal rib or like one of these mud tool scrapers. These are great. I really like this tool. Um, so you just kind of use it like a, like a scraping tool. And it just reduces that, like that line down to its essentials. So I know you guys can't see this in the frame right now, but I have this, um, my paper cut out sitting right in front of me on the wheelhead, or on the, um, the table, and I'm looking really carefully at the proportions and kind of like relationships between the shapes. Um, so I was just working in here a little bit because you can see this is like getting on towards being fairly flat here, like it moves in before it comes up and um, back out. So I was just kind of removing a little bit of that material. This is very flared, so I was removing a little bit here. And then we've got the ball. So just so you know this, I'm working from the reference that I created at the beginning. Okay, so the next thing to do here is we need to um, define where this change in direction is going to happen. Um, so I'm going to actually move it up a hair. So it's going to be like right here. So I'm going to put a banding line there. And then I know I'm going to come in and then back out to that line, which means I'm going to be removing a bunch of material in here. Then I'm going to remove a bunch of material in here because this is fairly narrow. This is narrower than it is up here. So we're going to waste in right here quite a bit. So now that this part is fairly figured out, um, I'm going to uh, address these areas down here. So again, I'm using a very small tool on a fairly large piece. Um, and I just want to emphasize why that's a good idea. So this puts a really, really small amount of drag on the piece. Like a really wide bladed tool like this puts a lot of drag on the piece. So if you use less drag, you're less likely to pull the piece off the bat uh, twist it, catch, you know, all kinds of terrible things can happen. So, small tools for this. Um, one important thing I haven't mentioned, um, I was sort of doing it subconsciously, but it's important to talk about this stuff. So I have the tool um, in my right hand, braced against my thumb, and I have my left uh, first two fingers riding on the piece itself here. So it sort of like uh, turns me into a lathe, right? I've like got a depth gauge essentially set by using my two fingers in my left hand riding against the piece.
So I've just trimmed out the interior of the top of the candlestick. Um, the kind of average diameter right around this center area is the 7 eighths I was talking about. So it's tapered and so is the candle. So that sort of works out pretty well. Um, it means that the candle can land uh, in the opening and sort of seat itself. So the only diameter that we really need to be concerned about right now in terms of like pottery thicknesses is right under this area and we're going to remove that at the end. So the rest of the piece is like under an inch. You'd want to fire this, you know, like on a slow bisque cycle after some long drying time, but generally it's just not really a big issue because um, the diameters aren't real uh, thick. So next thing I want to do here is just work on this line. This taper right here is a little bit um, uneven. So I'm actually going to use the rib I was talking about before and just scrape. So in terms of like how to go about this, what I do is I watch the far side while I'm scraping and then just kind of apply pressure where I need to remove more material. It takes a little practice, but it um, works pretty well once you get the hang of it. Another thing is, so I sharpened this a little bit, but if you aren't able to get a good cutting edge happening with your um, any scraping rib, um, bend it slightly, and that will give you a little bit more kind of like dig into the surface. Like that, and then you just kind of get those nice little curls coming off. So it's just a slight bend, and I just, I'm holding it the same way I normally do, just thumb in the center and spread the fingers out, but that little bit of curve lets you kind of bite in a little bit. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my video on doing the, um, thrown solid and trimmed candlestick. Um, here's my paper cutout. You can see we're kind of in the neighborhood. This one ended up a little bit shorter, but a lot of the detail work that I drew in the um, initial sort of design phase um, did translate through to the candlestick. So um, so it's cool. It gives you like a, a way to get started and I highly recommend it. Um, it helps you keep yourself kind of accountable um, and push your skills. So thanks for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next series.